morning everybody um i've i've moved um to a different place we're having a few internet issues so um um, I've moved here so hopefully this will be better so welcome to morning prayer on Thursday the 5th of November um, slightly better days let's hope we um, have better days uh, from now on because we are now in lockdown but again aren't we and and uh, it's a bit miserable actually um, We've had some joyous things in the parish though. Yesterday I was able to do two weddings for uh, two couples in their 80s who have decided that they just don't want to hang around anymore and wait for lockdown to finish. So we, um, we arranged very quickly licenses and were able to marry them uh, before the lockdown starts so they can start their married life together in lockdown. Um, but at least that was a cheerful thing and we need to think of cheerful and lovely things now don't we so morning prayer today um if you are following along with readings then um our psalm for today is psalm 11 and you can also read psalm 15 which is also set for today um, as they are quite short the um reading from the old testament is from daniel chapter 3 verses 1 to 18 so daniel 3 1 to 18 and when we get to the New Testament, which I shall read, um, we're in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verses 1 to 13. So right at the end, Revelation 3, 1 to 13. I think it's probably quite apt to be reading two ap apocalyptic um, writings um, in these apocalyptic times, really. So um, let's pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of the kingdom. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So remembrance season and, and kingdom season that we are now in. And so the uh, slight difference um, because of the change of season um, for our gospel canticle or New Testament canticle. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do not perceive it. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people the people who I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And so our New Testament reading from the book of, of Revelation, chapter 3, verses 1 to 13. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, These are the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works. You have a name for being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and see and strengthen what remains and is the point of, at the point of death. For I have not found your works perfect in the sight of my God. Remember what you received and heard obey it and repent if you do not wake up i will come like a thief and you will not know at the hour i will come yet you have still a few people in sardis who have not soiled their clothes they will walk with me dressed in white for they are worthy if you conquer you will be clothed like them in white robes 
and I will not blot your name out of the book of life. I will confess your name before my Father and before his angels. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These are the words of the Holy One, the True One, one who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, who shuts and no one opens. I know your works. Look, I have set before you an open door which no one is able to shut. I know that you have little power, and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those of the synagogue of Satan, who say that they are Jews and are not, but are lying, I will make them come and bow down before your feet, and they will learn that I have loved you. Because you have kept my word of patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. I am coming soon. Hold fast to what you have, so that no one may seize your crown. If you conquer, I will make you a pillar in the temple of my God. You will never go out of it. I will write on the name of my God and the name of the city of my God the new Jerusalem that comes down from my God out of heaven and my own name. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The book of Revelation is, um, is an odd book. It's difficult to understand. It has been misinterpreted very much. Uh, so and still is um, but it is a fascinating book and and I love it actually um, and I love this uh, at the beginning where the spirit is writing to the angel of the church and and that, that I love that thought the angel of the church um, so what is the angel of the church um, well, you know when you walk into somewhere, um, someone's house, a church, um, place of work even, and, and you can feel the atmosphere. Um, often a lot of churches you can walk in and you can feel that prayerfulness that has been there for centuries. And sometimes you can walk in and think, ooh, I'm not sure. And, and, and that can be any places, that can be in homes and not just churches, any, any place. And there are those places in the world that are called thin places, you know, those very special places, not buildings necessary, some are buildings, um, but beautiful places, um, mountains, deserts, um, known as thin places where heaven meets earth and earth meets heaven. Um, and we talked a bit about that on Sunday for those of you who were in church on Sunday, um, and it being All Saints Day, and the Saturday night being um, Halloween or Hallow's Eve, um, which, which has been, you know, spoiled, I suppose, uh, some would say, into this childish dressing up thing, but actually is a day when supposedly earth and heaven are at their closest, and so we can almost talk to our ancestors and see our ancestors um, and the saints that have gone behind before us. So that feeling of being connected, of knowing that there's a prayerfulness, uh, knowing an atmosphere of a place is what um, is being talked about in, in this um, book of Revelation, or in this part of Revelation. The angel of the church, you can feel it. Um, and so the, the spirit is writing to the angel of the church and saying, I know you, you're not great actually, or I know you and you're doing great works and carry on, you might be small um, and you might be only few and it might be hard work but you're doing it brilliantly. Um, and there's, there's several of them, read it, read Revelation, the, the beginning of the, the stories of the angels of the church. So I wonder what our angels are, what do you think when we walk into our church buildings? And it doesn't have to be an ancient building like St John's. 
um, or a very modern building like All Saints, the atmosphere is still there and you can feel it. But what's our angel doing? Is she, um, you know, lying back on the sofa, half asleep? Um, or is she praying with us and urging us on and, and helping us on? What do you think? What about your own? What do you think your angel is doing? Are they jeeing you on or are they a bit laid back and you're the one that needs to give them a kick and say, get going. I can see you, but you're not doing great and your name won't be in the book. Or carry on good and faithful servant you're doing brilliantly it's tough but you're doing it well and you will be in the book of life i wonder what do you think read revelation and ponder on it and pray on it and uh, and see what you think so let's pray so father god we lift to you ourselves and we lift to you the saints that have gone before us and all the angels in heaven. And we pray now for this difficult time that again we face for the next six or more weeks, who knows. We pray for all of those who are particularly suffering from being locked down again, who find isolation so very difficult, who are a long way from loved ones. We think of all of those who are not able to do as we are doing and looking online and finding companionship and prayers and things that bring us joy. Lord be with all of those who are suffering. We pray too particularly for our NHS, for all the staff, for doctors and nurses and paramedics and all who are keeping us safe and healing us when we fall ill. Be with them, Lord. Let them know that you are a God that walks beside them in all the grief, in all the sadness, in all the pain and the difficultiness, in the stress and the horror of what you see, that he walks beside you. And Lord, we thank you for the very many blessings that we do have, for a roof over our head, a warm place to lock down, windows to see outside your beauty, for technology, for family and friends who ring us, who write to us, who love us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we pray for our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ around the world who are suffering, praying so very much at the moment for our Armenian brothers and sisters and those in Artsakh who are fearful of another genocide. Lord, we pray that something would be done to stop this war that our brothers and sisters would be saved, that governments would find a way for peace, for talking to each other, rather than bombing each other. We pray this for all areas of conflict around the world. Lord, help us to seek peace. And we pray for our brothers and sisters in the US of A as the final counts come in. That country has such an influence over all the countries of the world in war and peace. So we pray your peace in that country and your blessing over its leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we lift to you, Lord, all those we hold in our own hearts and minds, in our church congregations, in our families and our friends, who are unwell at the moment. We pray especially for those 
who are facing an end to their lives. We pray your healing and that all would know your presence. And we pray for all of those who are facing funerals or at who at this time of year particularly remember their loved ones in this remembrance season. Giving thanks for all of those we have loved, for the time we shared together and the joys we shared. Lord, help us to write our names in your book so that we and all the saints before us shall be one day joined together. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so may God bless you in this coming week and in these weeks of lockdown ahead of us. And uh, please do be in touch if any of us can pray for you or be of any help. Bless you. Bye.